Hi, my name is Adam Adzed. I'm the head coach at Factory BJJ in Stockport, Greater Manchester. Today I've got Spencer Wells with me, who's one of my blue belts. This is the second video on the backstep guard passing system. And as I said in the first video, the backstep is my favorite way to pass the guard. I think it's a really versatile way to um, uh, pass the guard, but also there's some really nice submissions that we're gonna look at uh, in a later video. If you've not seen the first video, do go back and check it because we talk about all the fundamentals of how to set up the backstep pass. This video is going to be focusing on the counters. So, first video we talked about working from this knee cut position. Very common in Jiu Jitsu, gi and no gi. I like to have my hand on the hip, I've got my uh, shin across his thigh and I'm based out. Whether the guy gets the underhook or whether I just put my hands on the mat, it's going to allow me the space to be able to backstep to the other side. And in the first video, we focused on working to free the leg with a push-pull here or by going to the quarter mount. The most common count that you're going to um, come across when you start working this regularly is that the guy is going to get a uh, hook in and start to look at sweeping me back. So what's going to happen, I start to backstep and before we I had a chance to face out, he's going to put his hook inside and come up to the top position. Okay? Really, really common. A lot of schools teach it and uh, I've used it myself a lot over the years. So same again, I start to back step. Spencer quickly grabs the knee and he starts to lift with the hook and starts to come up on top. And I actually find that in this position, really, really a good opportunity for me to continue my pass without any kind of disruption. Hands go on the mat, I back step from here. Remember, first video I talked about landing on my toes, not on my heel. Now, as soon as Spencer starts to hook underneath, I hook under his, his leg and I grab the toes. I don't grab the gi, I don't grab the shin, I grab right by the toes, because I want to try and affect the hook. If he's trying to lift me from here with that hook, it's a lot harder to do. I'm keeping good pressure with my cross face, and I'm going to drive. So again, I can't drive off the flat of this foot. I'm driving. And if you notice here, I'm turning Spencer onto his right hip. It's very, very difficult for him to sweep me in the direction of the camera and him being on this side here. I've got all my weight on this side. I don't want to stay light here or even neutral. He's going to be able to counter. So I turn him to the side and I've got a good couple of options. First one is I straighten my leg and I kick it to this side. Now, I can unhook the uh, grip on the foot and then come to a side control position. If I want to add any extra pressure or take his spine out of alignment, I can do. So the same again, I've back steps, he's gone here. Now, invariably the guy's going to put his foot on the floor to bridge and to start sweeping. So being able to quickly go underneath this leg, once I start to feel this grip on the knee and this hook, is really easy to do. You'll start to, to notice and pick this up very quickly. So look, I'm driving off my toes. First option, I straighten my leg out and I clear to this side. Again, if you want to start collecting his leg and start to put the pressure on, we can. Second option from here is I do the same thing again. I collect his foot underneath his leg from here and I'm turning him onto that hip. This instance is his right hip. If, I, if I've got the, uh, uh, the turn here, what I can do is I can straighten my leg out and actually tuck it on this side of the body. Now, once I'm here, I can come up, I can underhook, and then I can step over. So I've got an underhook and I've got a really nice knee cut at this point. This is my preferred option here. I like this a lot. And when I teach this, I find that generally a lot of people prefer that. Some people don't have this, the flexibility to get to this side. But all I'm doing here is straightening my leg. So don't be watching this video and thinking, I've not got the flexibility. You can straighten your leg, tuck it inside here. And all I'm gonna do is just base up. I shoot for my underhook, and then I can let go of the leg. I step over, I've got the underhook here, and then I can take care of his hips and finalize the position when I'm in the top. So, different angle. So I'll shoot from this side. I back step, now, Spencer, so look, I've got my foot ready, I'm, I'm primed to try and finish the pass, but he's done a great job. Hands on the knee, he's got the hook here. So I shoot down, I reach up underneath his leg, 
and then I either come to this side and pass here, or I'm going to turn onto this hip here and go for my underhook. Look, I just go from here, he's on his hip, I get my underhook, step over, collect his arm up, and I'm ready to go. Now, bonus move, all right? So Spencer's in the same position. They're like the first and second kind of options from here from this counter. But if I do manage to get to this, this foot onto this side, what I'm actually gonna do is come to a reverse mount position. I'll usually go for this one that I can't get the underhook. So if he's holding really tight and I can't dig to the underhook, I don't wanna step over. I don't wanna just put my hand on the floor, step over, because look, he's got the underhook, he can wrestle up, and then we're gonna be in trouble. So it's very tempting once I do get this back step, you know, fish for the foot and I get my leg over the top that I can, I can start to just step over regardless. But you need this underhook. So if he is tight, all I'm gonna do from here, and actually I'm gonna switch into this side so you guys can see a bit, bit better. I back step, he gets the hook. I come up from here to the reverse mount. I put both hands on the hips and I sprawl heavy back into this kind of really nice, deep, north-south position. Watch again. With same angle, same position. He's doing a good job trying to counter. I shoot my hand under, grab the toes, and here I'm going to struggle. So I've got to turn him onto that hip. Again, I can go this way or this way. I come up to the reverse mount because I can't get the underhook. And this time, I put both hands on the hips. I'm going to sprawl heavy right over his shoulder. I'm in a great position for the north-south. It's going to be difficult for him to regard quickly. And if you've got some good attacking game from there, you're going to be in the element. So, if you've played any kind of backstep guard passing, you're going to have been kind of swept and countered with this uh, numerous times. This is a position that I found almost by accident. Uh, one day I managed to get hold of the guy's toes and then realized he couldn't sweep me back. So I built kind of a good way to recounter, in my opinion, the most common way to stop the back step guard pass. And you can do that by going to a regular side control, getting that underhook and stepping over for your kind of normal knee slice pass, or a little bonus one for you, working to the reverse mount and then this nice heavy sprawl position uh, that we can end up in the north south. So, if you want to follow us, uh, Factory BJJ is uh, the name on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and we love visitors. So, if you want to come and train with us anytime, visit factorybjj.com, and we'll see you on the mats.